The world is divided and fragmented across boundaries of race, gender, technology, geography, economics. And one that's increasingly prevalent is of generations. The gap and divide between generations is increasing. Now, yes, this divide has been around as long as, as, long as anyone can remember, but due to the unprecedented combination of complex issues we face today, from air pollution in our rapidly growing cities, to pressures on our healthcare system with aging populations, to issues of inclusion and community as inequality rises, now is the time we need to find and support leaders who are going to find solutions to today and tomorrow's problems. Those of us who are no longer young, those of us over 30, let's say, have an opportunity to not do what was done to us, to not treat those in their 20s the way that we were, being told to wait our turns, spending decades working in old structures, reinforcing outdated practices. For the past 10 years at Common Purpose, I've been traveling the world, from Benghazi to Boston, Manila to Melbourne, Singapore to Shanghai, for le to run leadership programs. Leadership programs for over 7,000 university students from across the world. For senior leaders, as they look to develop and mentor the next generation, I've committed myself to supporting the next generation as they stand up, lead with cultural intelligence, and look to tackle the complex problems we face. And to genuinely enable them to lead, I wanted to know what they thought about leadership and the leaders they, they aspire to be. So we asked them. 1,000 young people from over 50 countries, 1,000 young leaders from across the world. And they named this new approach open source leadership. And they articulated the world they see and the world they want to create. So let me tell you about this world and the five key priorities they identified. These young leaders see a world where we need to work together and across divides, but instead are working for our own individual gain and success. This focus on young people to succeed, I see the world over. And being half Japanese, I'm acutely aware of it in Asia. And this was really brought to life for me recently, working with a young lady in Hong Kong, Iris. And Iris is an academic high achiever. She's president of clubs and societies. She volunteers in the community. She's a self-proclaimed leader and success. She has one of those application forms, of which I see many, which you look at and think, how on earth have you done all of this by the time you're 20? But the thing that impressed me most about Iris was her transformation on a leadership program in Manila. It's there she realized she didn't always have to project being the strong leader, always leading from the front, that she could step back and open up, and she could work with her peers in the team for the team rather than her own individual success. These young leaders see a world where, where discrimination and intolerance is increasing. Over three quarters of them have experienced discrimination and intolerance, both offline and online. That's the overwhelming majority of a 1,000 young people from across the world experiencing discrimination and intolerance. And that's why they're committed to being a generation who counterbalance intolerance by being inclusive. This next generation see, see a world where we, as the older generation, were slow to adapt to the inter internet, to bridge the offline and the online worlds. And they're hugely excited about AI. A staggering 88% of these young leaders said so. And they committed to being quick and being bridge builders to a world of AI in the way that we, as the older generation, weren't with the internet. These young leaders see a world where hierarchy and notions of respect and deference to status and rank are deeply ingrained. Age and job title are still deemed to confer authority. And they want a world that's accessible and approachable, where they can work through networks rather than hierarchical structures. A Mauritian University graduate I know, VK, wanted to work in a multinational. He'd set up NGOs in China while he was studying. He had this amazing philosophy of just get stuff done. He was so adept at making things happen, not waiting for permission. Not because he was impatient, he just didn't see a need to wait. VK wanted to experience what it was like to work in an organization of, of serious size and scale. So he got a job at a major US bank. And it was there that he didn't see the hierarchical structures his older colleagues did. So one day, when a senior exec gave a presentation on the, the bank's response to fintech, VK, VK's interest was piqued. So he sent the senior exec an email. 
The exec responded, invited him up to his office, they started talking, a relationship grew, and this led to further opportunities for VK down the line. But his older colleagues couldn't believe what he had done. To them, he had crossed a line. But to VK, the world is accessible, people are approachable, networks are there to be navigated. These young leaders also see a world where notions of trust and being trustworthy are at a low. And they want to rebuild trust by first leading by example and being trustworthy themselves. They'll earn trust and be a generation who rebuild trustworthiness. I was talking to a young colleague at Common Purpose India, Mega. Um, and Mega, uh, Mega was telling me how integrity is the family motto. That as a kid, when she was growing up, she would, she would scold and tell off her friends if she caught them cheating at cards or games of hide and seek. And I can totally picture this. Mega's a remarkably warm, kind, and loving person. But she's tough. She's principled. You wouldn't mess with her. And she was telling me how one day her mum came home and told her that only 17% of the budget for the new city metro system had actually been spent on building it. And it was then that Mega realized others didn't share her sense of integrity, that others were dishonest and corrupt, and this shocked Mega. It shocked her into studying politics rather than marine biology, because she realized she needed to play a part in building a system built on integrity and trust. And it shocked Mega into realizing that she needed to stand up and make a difference. So if that's the world these young leaders want to create, and the leaders they aspire to be, how do we as the no longer young generation respond? We took the aspirations of these young leaders, we shared them with their peers and leaders around the world. We asked, how do we create this new world and change what it means to lead? And we were told that we need to genuinely collaborate and value diverse thoughts and recognize the contributions that everyone makes and not steal others' credit. That we can't just say that we will challenge discrimination and intolerance when we see it, because that's passive, but to live it and call it out. That we can't let our apprehension of a digital world and our emphasis on face-to-face -face, uh, offline communication be a barrier and give the next generation license to run with AI. We need to stop expecting respect because of age and rank and having 15 years of experience. Instead, earn it. And we need to make ourselves deserving of trust and demonstrate our trustworthiness by being consistent in our leadership and our expectations. If we're able to embrace this new vision for what leadership means today, and what leaders will need to do in the future, if we're able to align ourselves with this model of open source leadership, then I believe we can find that elusive balance between supporting and standing aside. And if we can find that, this next generation will thrive and can tackle the complex problems we face. Thank you.